Om Namah Shivaya Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namaste We got a comment last night of someone who was basically accusing us of being neo Adwaitans <laughs> because we talk about instant enlightenment. In other words, if you read and understand the descriptions of consciousness in the Upanishads and by the realized beings like Ramana Maharshi and Shankaracharya and others, then if you really understand the meaning of those words, I mean, just aham brahmasmi, tattvamasi, these mahavakyas of the Vedas, if you actually understood the meaning of them, you would become enlightened immediately. Enlightenment, self-realization, happens in a moment. So why do we have to go through long periods of sadhana? Why do we have to go through different processes of bhakti and karma yoga and jnana, meditation and so on and so forth? Why can't we just read the instructions or the descriptions of enlightenment and immediately realize? Well, we know why that is. <laughs> because we had those experiences and the thing that triggered them is actually understanding the words the meaning of the words in the scriptures. Now, when the scriptures say, you are Brahman, or everything is Brahman, Sarva Kalvidam Brahma, when they say, you are Shiva, huh? Shiva, hum, I am Shiva. What do they mean, actually? And this is the difficulty. People are taking these words in a completely wrong way, misunderstanding the definitions of the words, and because of that, they can't realize anything. So they have to go on long side trips into karma yoga, bhakti yoga, raja yoga, whatever, mantras, pujas, so many things until one day, more or less by chance, more or less by accident, I think, they get it right. And when they do, bingo, self-realization. So we're thinking, you know, after having these experiences, that there should be like a more direct way, a more immediate path to realizing these recondite statements, you know, that, that you just read them and go, oh, yeah, that's what it is. Well, to start with, the Vedas ultimately, and, and especially the Upanishads, especially, focus on consciousness. Consciousness is the root of everything, of all phenomena, of the world, of the self, the mind. Everything that we experience happens within consciousness. Consciousness is the main context of everything. But just we, because we talk about consciousness, this doesn't mean that we give up like all the other means of self-realization such as 
bhakti and karma yoga, meditation, contemplation, study of the scriptures, performance of ritual, puja, and so on. It doesn't because this is magic. <laughs> this is divine magic. And I finally get around to the topic, right? But how do you get the ability to actually know the meaning of these words in the scriptures? Well, you can study. You can very carefully research the meaning. Uh, you can look into yourself and try to identify and discern and distinguish the different stages and types and states of consciousness talked about in the scriptures. This is really the best way because this leads directly to realization. In other words, we read something in the scripture and we go sit down and look within ourselves and find that phenomenon within. That's why Shiva says in the Devi Kalotra Tantra to meditate on the void. Because actually there is no void. <laughs> I'll tell you a big secret. You can meditate on the void <laughs> and then you'll discover one thing. You are present. You know, wherever you go, there you are, right? <laughs> so even if you go into the void, neti neti, you get rid of everything else. Nullify, deny everything else. You are still there. And you are Brahman. <laughs> if you understood what I just said, you'd be enlightened right this minute. So what we're saying is the performance of religious rituals of any taste. We prefer Shiva, Shiva and Shakti. But any deity, any symbol, any metaphor of the divine will do. As long as you have faith in it, as long as you have taste for it, it will work. And this is magic. Just because we realize the meaning of these Mahavakyas and we have the experience of being Brahman, it's not just an idea, it's an actual experience. And everybody is having this experience all the time, but because they can't discern and recognize and distinguish it, they don't realize it. This is so crazy. This is why <laughs> when you realize enlightenment, when you realize the self, huh? You just sit down and have the biggest belly laugh <laughs> that, oh man, it was always like this. I just didn't notice. This is the great cosmic joke. I didn't notice that I am Brahman. Therefore, I went out into the world and I got entangled in all this suffering. What a tragic thing. When I see people walking down the street and I can tell they're suffering like anything, I wish I could tell them. I wish I could get them to get the cosmic joke. Then there's no more suffering. But if you can't just get it directly, okay, there's magic. And the magic works. See, I, it's almost 10 minutes into the video. I can now talk about the really secret confidential things because all the stupid people leave by six minutes or seven minutes. <laughs> so we're saying that worship of God, worship of the deity, the rituals of karma and bhakti and 
even meditations and so on like that, are magic. How are they magic? Why are they magic? And how does it work? According to consciousness, okay, we have four states of consciousness, waking, dreaming, deep sleep, and unconditioned consciousness. Unconditioned consciousness is what we're after. Unconditioned awareness of awareness. This is Turiya. This is Brahman. This is self-realization. So how do we attain that? Through magic. <laughs> well, the secret is Sushupti. Sushupti, deep sleep, seems to be the void. But like I said, even if you advance enough in meditation to go into the void and meditate on the void, you'll find ultimately it's not void. You are there. And you are Brahman. Unlimited, boundless being, consciousness and bliss. No suffering. <laughs> so how do you get there? How do you get the punya, the good karma, subha karma? How do you get that? Well, you have to do puja. This is magic. And the way it works is you collect many, many impressions, many sangskaras, mental impressions, mental pictures, recordings of experiences that have divine qualities. What are the divine qualities? Well, they're all sattvic, goodness. So, awareness, consciousness, intelligence, will, purity, beauty, love, kindness, compassion, all these kind of things are sattvic. So, for example, when we listen to beautiful music, I mean like Vedic music, devotional music especially, this creates impressions in the mind. So when we listen to it, that's why we began this video with just a few seconds of some mantras. When you listen to this, or when you worship the deity, and you worship by offering all kinds of beautiful things, incense, lamps, you know, the flame, camphor, flowers, a pure water from sacred rivers. I mean, it, you know, so many things we can offer. We've been through it over and over again on the Shiva Purana series. Tons of suggestions how to worship. We build many impressions of beauty in the mind. And we take those with us when we go into sleep and then into dreams and finally into deep sleep. Deep sleep is sushupti. There are no impressions. There is no awareness of objects in deep sleep. There is only pure awareness. That's why Ramana Maharshi said that deep sleep is like resting in the lap of Brahman. But when we go into deep sleep, we bring with us the impressions and the intentions generated on those impressions. So if we make many impressions of beautiful things, holy things, sacred things, having to do with God, the Absolute, Brahman, consciousness, and so on and so on. And we bring those with us into deep sleep. They become powerful intentions because deep sleep is only cause. See, we don't understand deep sleep, sushupti consciousness very well. And because we don't, we give it all kinds of ill names, like ignorance, like the shadow, like unawareness, so many things. But it's not. It's not. It the unconscious or subconscious mind, and so on and so on. 
But sushupti is none of these things. Sushupti is a very powerful mode of consciousness that when we bring impressions and intentions into it through the dream state, this is why bhakti is associated with dream consciousness, svapna, svapna chaitanya. Then these intentions are so powerful, they manifest. This is magic. This is also why people who try to deny parts of themselves, like sexuality or, uh, you know, certain kinds of activities that they would like to perform, but they can't or think they can't for some reason. These ultimately come to rule them. And Carl Jung called this the shadow. But it's not really a shadow. It's not really the unconscious or the subconscious. It's really sushupti, deep sleep. And when we direct this sushupti consciousness at something that we want to go away by ignoring it, huh? that's where the word ignorance comes from. So we go into ignorance regarding those things that we wish would go away. But all that happens is that they come to rule us. Because sushupti is not ignorance, it's pure intention. It's divine will. And so all those impressions that we throw into the wastebasket, the dustbin of the mind, <laughs> sushupti, the so-called unconscious, <laughs> come to haunt us because that is the shadow. See, the Christians especially don't understand this. They call it Satan and all the kinds of nasty things. But it's really just their ignorance of consciousness. <laughs> if we know how to manage sushupti consciousness, it becomes a veritable fountain of creation and we can create the world and the body that we want to live in through it by means of directed intentions and deliberate impressions. And that was the meaning, that was the mechanism behind the book, Easy Journey to Other Planets, that we discussed in a previous video. So you see, these are the kind of things that we learn by studying consciousness. It's not that we just give up everything that isn't directly, you know, the four states of consciousness. No, 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 no. <laughs> but we see that these four states of consciousness are the mechanism, are the way that things work on the different levels of spiritual attainment. And once we understand that, we become a master, a master of consciousness, a master of self-realization. And, and this is the real meaning of full enlightenment. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya.